In this section, we'll learn about anatomical planes. So as you know, a large part of anatomy and what we're going to be doing in this class is, is cutting things up. And so whenever you make a cut through the body, we call that a plane. So depending on the cut that you make, what you see is going to be different. And so it's important to understand how that cut, what, what that cut is and, and also what the name of that cut is. So in this picture here, we have an individual... And you can see this individual has been cut in three different, three different ways. Depending on how the person is cut, we have a different name for that. And we also have a different image that's, that's, that we're going to see. And you can see down below here where we have the different images that come from these different planes, these different cuts. And this is important when we're looking at, depending on the cut that we make, that we're going to see organs differently. So in each case here, we're cutting through the body, and we're looking at similar organs. But they're going to look very different depending on what we're looking at. So as we look at different pictures throughout the semester, I'll point out, I'll try to remember to point out uh, what type of plane we're looking at so you, you, have, you can get your bearings and know what we're looking at. So if you were to stand straight up and you were to cut a line straight down through your body, okay, we call that the sagittal plane or or... In this case, they called they, under the picture here. They called it the median section. Based, the the median section is a special word for what we call the mid sagittal, and you can kind of see this here written down below. So sagittal is any cut from the going straight down through your body, cutting it into two halves, a right side and a left side. That's going to be a sagittal cut. If, however, you cut right down the middle of the body, that's going to be a mid-sagittal, so you're right down the middle, or a median cut. Okay, then we have the frontal cut, as shown here. In the frontal, you're making a cut from top to bottom, but you're splitting the body's in, body into a front and a back. So if sagittal does a left and a right, the frontal does a back and a front. And then finally, we have the transverse plane. And, the trans, and this is often called a cross-section as well. The transverse plane... You're cutting the body into a top and a bottom. And you can see in these pictures here how depending on how you make the cut, you're going to get very different pictures. So the sagittal cut versus the frontal cut versus the transverse plane are all going to have very different, uh, you're going to see very different things in each of these cuts here. The last thing to talk about in this section is, our, is what is called body cavities. Here's a picture, a picture of the body cavities. Before we talk about the cavities, though, I want you to tell me what type of plane we are looking at here. Is this a sagittal plane? Is this a, a frontal? Or is this a transverse plane that we're looking at here? Okay, hopefully you answered that this would be a sagittal. And in this case, probably a mid, mid-sagittal cut right down through the, the middle of the body. So remember, the sagittal cuts it into the right and the left halves. Our body cavities come in two, two main sections. We have what's called the dorsal body cavity and then also the ventral body cavity. So thinking back to a minute ago when we were talking about directional terms, we had dorsal versus ventral. Remember that dorsal was referring to the back or remember our dorsal, I mentioned this idea of a dorsal fin. So if we had a dorsal fin, it would be on our back. And so this is our dorsal area. That's also the dorsal cav cavity. The dorsal cavity here is, is this kind of brownish. It's made up of the, the head and specifically the brain and everything that goes along with that, the skull, and then also the spinal cord. That is the dorsal cavity. Notice, notice that the dorsal cavity here is split up into two sections, the cranial cavity and then the spinal cavity. So the cranial cavity is just the brain. The spinal cavity is the spinal cord area. That's how that's split up there. The ventral cavity, on the other hand, the ventral is in the front, 
And so it, it entails your lungs, your digestive system, your pelvic region. All of that is going to be part of the ventral body cavity. It can further be broke up, broken up into the thoracic cavity. And this thoracic cavity here is this area here, just where your lungs are, basically, your lungs and heart. And then you have the abdominal pelvic cavity, which can further be split up, split up into the abdominal and the pelvic cavity. Notice here that the thing that is separating the two is the diaphragm. So there's a definite section between the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity formed by the diaphragm. In the abdominal pelvic cavity, however, the, the section be, there's no actual division between the abdominal cavity and pelvic cavity. That's why we call the abdominal pelvic cavity. But the pelvis itself forms a partial barrier, and so that's where the pelvic cavity would would be located versus the abdominal cavity. So depending on which cavity you're talking about, there are different organs found in each of those cavities. So if I say something like the heart, you know that the heart is found in the thoracic cavity. If I mention the the large intestine, the large intestine is going to be in your abdominal cavity, though it does poke down into the pelvic cavity as well. Uh, your, gon- your gonads, the testes, the ovaries, those are going to be in the pelvic cavity. Okay, so depending on what structure you're talking about, what organ you're talking about, it's going to be found in these different cavities. So the cavities are basically just ways to to talk about where organs are located and their relationship to each other as well. Last of all, just let me point out that the abdominal pelvic cavity can further be split up into either quadrants is one way that is split up, um, or also regions. In this case, in the regions, there are nine different regions that are used to, to refer to different parts of the abdominal pelvic region. Because it's starting to such a, a large cavity, there's a lot of organs there, uh, doctors will either use these regions or these quadrants to talk about it. The quadrants, quadrants aren't necessarily very difficult, right and left upper and the right and left lower. Notice again, though, I'll point out here that the right side is referring to the patient's right side. Left side referring to the patient's left side as well. So when you're thinking about yourself, your right upper quadrant and left upper quadrant will be ref- will be your right and left hands. But when you're looking at somebody else, that's going to be be opposite. Same thing with the the regions here. We have the right side versus the left side, and with a little bit of practice, some of these terms maybe don't make much sense right now. But but as you practice memorizing these, uh, you'll recognize these different regions here. The right hypochondriac, hypo meaning up, um, hypochondriac region, epigastric, epi meaning middle, left hypochondriac region, you have the right lumbar region, umbilical region. If you think back to the directional terms, we had the the lumbar region uh, as one of the, the, the terms, the regional terms on the body the left lumbar region, the, the right iliac, iliac referring to the pelvic, pelvic bone there, hypogastric region, and then the left iliac region. And those are the different regions of the body. That finishes us up for this uh, section of anatomy and physiology, and we'll see you in the next lecture.